I'm quite negative to begin with. I'm very, oh, nev nothing's ever gonna go right. I've struggled with self-esteem issues for all my high school life. I usually see myself as um, not that, like, I don't see myself as important. Everything's gonna die and I'm, the world's gonna end and no, I, I have no contingency plans. What is happening? I don't want someone to live an unhappy life and non-fulfilling and never reach their dreams or ambitions because my role as a principal is making certain that we're looking at the whole student. Regarding mental health, no, the loose statistics are saying one in four adolescents suffering from a diagnosed mental health issue. Now that's really alarming because we want to make certain that our students that leave school are academically achieving at their highest level of their ability, but also their mental health is actually taken care of and they've got the skills and strategy to live a, a wonderful, flourishing life. Well, our positive education program started three years ago. We were working with the Adelaide Thinkers in Residence program with Martin Seligman and I was tasked with the opportunity of how do we embed positive education approaches into a school. We put positive education at the same level as we do with literacy and numeracy. We've also worked in partnership with Adelaide University and we've developed a, a wellbeing survey tool for our high school students from 8 to 12. And what we can do with our approach is actually tailor make our curriculum and our positive education approaches to suit and support that group of students as they progress from year 8 to year 12. So in our case, it's not one thing fits all. It's actually an adaptable program to cater for the individual needs of each year level as we go along. The measurement idea behind it is really crucial to make certain that our programs and our, our work that we're doing in school is actually suiting and helping our students move to more into a better frame of, of mind and into a better life as they leave Mount Barker High School. So it means that our students are being exposed to positive education in every subject, even though they don't know it. So for example, one of our English teachers uh, was doing Project 365, which is an app where you take a photo of something you're grateful for every day. So she set up a section of the pin-up board in her room and asked her students to bring in photos of things that they were grateful for to share with other students. Um, now the reason behind that is that the research shows that we have a tendency to look at the negative and we have a negativity bias and we find looking at the positives more difficult. What's really important is to train our mind to stop and reflect on the good things that are going well in our life. Each teacher has a different way of approaching it. In year 10 I remember one of my, our maths teacher had us write gratitude letters and so that was a really meaningful lesson. Half of us were in tears by the end of it, but it was a very fulfilling lesson. In English, every now and then, if we read a book or something, we'll have to do an essay, and one of the choices might focus on our signature character strengths. We get to choose one to focus on, on how the characters have developed that or used that throughout the book. And that's really interesting. It gets us, you know, really thinking about their motivations as a character and also how we use that strength ourselves. They're challenged by saying, this is, this is part of what we do at school. Aren't we supposed to be doing maths? Aren't we supposed to be doing English? But we're doing stuff about character strengths. How does this work? I don't see the connections. And our role as teachers is to show them the connections as how using these strategies in class will make them more successful. We've been working with our Year 9s on positive emotions and also on having meaning in their lives. And uh, as a part of that, unit of work. We put up a tree in the Year 9 area and the Year 9s made leaves where they wrote wishes down for their futures which they've been hanging on the wishing tree. At the start we're like, oh, why do we need positive education? At first there were the worries, people were a bit, you know, timid to go right into it. They're challenged by the program because it actually asks them to reflect personally on stuff they don't, you know, they sort of normally let go by sort of thing. Being self-reflective makes you a very strong person. It allows you to be more critical of yourself in a safe environment. You know, an environment where you can be critical of yourself and go, I'm terrible at this, I'm bad at that. But then you sort of, you have your positive education in place so it sort of kicks in and goes, well you may be bad at this and terrible at that, but you could be better at this if you tried and you pushed yourself to do it more. The fact that they think now that they can, or know now, sorry, that they can actually take a positive approach and do something for themselves in a positive way um, has been really empowering to the students. Rather than, you know, we're sad, we're depressed, you know, we don't really know what to do, they've actually now got some, some tools in their toolbox that they can actually take forward.
what I would say right now is our students are getting meaning. It's definitely made me think of things differently, which I think is one of the major points of the positive education movement sort of thing, to make kids be taught to be self-aware and so they can go, I'm being negative, I'm being too critical of myself. There is still a good chance that everything's going to be okay. Like, you, it does, that's the whole point of it, to give you these skills and I think it's really started to succeed. We are seeing improvement in wellbeing of our students. We've seen a 7% improvement in the wellbeing of our year eights moving into year nine. And that's actually, it's, it's a sensational result in such a short period of time. I've got a different way of looking at myself. I focus more on the strengths that I have as an individual. My personal belief, it comes down to why people went to university to study to become a teacher. Because a lot of them you'll say, I wanted to be able to help and nurture a young person to grow in life. Instead of looking at the negatives all the time, you look at the positives as well. And ever since, like, I've thought myself, like, oh, yeah, kind of important. <laughs> I'm definitely less negative about the world now than I was before. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself, definitely.